she just get it from the Donald J. 
James Rowley. Tanya Samala Inge. Shannon Christine McCullen. Chris Gibson. Mark Edward Wren. Maria Rose LaMonica. Cara Deanne McLeod. Jeff Flick. Guy Long. On the corner of Penny, every single person. Kim
we leave here today with friends. On a final note, I have to say thanks. I hope the parents and teachers out here today don't think that the graduating class sitting here before you doesn't know and appreciate how lucky we are. Plans for the future. But for the most part, we really don't know 
Just as the ship is provisioned, we too have been provisioned with the skills and the knowledge that come from parental support and training from all of our wonderful teachers. At this time, we are all waiting at the entrance of the harbor, and soon we will be leaving behind the security that we now know, sailing forth into life, completely independent, to discover our true selves and realize our own dreams. Our voyage through life, although exhilarating, will not be easy. As captains of our souls, we are completely responsible for which heading we take toward the paradise we one day hope to encounter. In the course of our journeys, we will call upon the knowledge and the skills that we now possess. But as each of our experiences will be unique, we will be forced to make fate-determining decisions that will be influenced by the changing conditions in our lives. Although we all hope for sunshine and smooth sailing, encounters with stormy weather and even tidal waves will be inevitable. There will be continual battles with emotions such as fear, anxiety, and depression that arise from lapses in our confidence and in our abilities. Believing in ourselves, which is the key to my speech, is the only thing that will allow our dream to remain within our reach. It is simply too easy to be washed overboard. It is simply too easy to be washed overboard if we don't grasp the essential life lifeline of self-confidence with all of our strength. Sailors through time have relied on the stars to guide them in the dark and in the unknown. Even in the height of confusion and turmoil in our own lives, we can look into ourselves and rely on our own intuition to be our compass. By listening to our inner selves, we can override all of the impertinent criticisms and demands that other will, others will try to burden us with in the future. Where life holds unlimited dangers and pitfalls, it also holds unlimited opportunity for all of us. Actively seeking to broaden ourselves through experiences, travel, and social contacts is essential in defining ourselves as individuals. As we develop as individuals, our dreams will take on the shape of goals that will be ours alone. As we discover and understand our true selves, we will come closer and closer to, and will ultimately reach our own unique paradise. People say that high school is the best time in your life, but I personally believe that life will be as great as we want to make it. The time has come. We have the freedom to sail forward in the pursuit of our dreams. Let's make them come true. Yeah. 
the audience, parents, friends, and relatives tonight, or even since the presence of the class of 85 behind me, there arises the feelings of love, happiness, pain, and frustration that all of us have shared among the members of our special class. Oh. <laughs> tonight we gather here to celebrate an accomplishment, whether it's that of managing those last consumer ed credits consumer ed requirements, uh, being named scholar or athlete of the year, or even graduating at all. It's a time to be proud of attaining a goal that we set for ourselves. We're here to recognize each other tonight, to recognize those who in the last 12 years of our education have pursued that image of adulthood that will soon become the reality of the world. We're sitting here among the excitement of graduation. I think all of us could admit to being a little scared of the future. Scared of the question of whether we will make it or not. Except for our entire senior class, is marked with all the tentativeness of the solitary senior stepping out beyond the double doors of the world of Dana Hills. For many of us, it'll be stepping away from security for the very first time. But yes, we've grown together with, through the bonds of friendship camaraderie, the many faces of approaching adulthood. Every page that we've learned in a textbook has represented just a sampling of the world of emotion we've experienced with each other. We've learned love from parents who believed in our abilities and led us to believe in them also, and from friends who supported us when no one else could and not led or followed us that just walk beside us. We learned of knowledge from discovery, the discovery of what made us so special from the rest. And with that behind us, we were compelled to learn even more. We learned pain from loss. For many of us, experiencing the loss of something we truly love for the first time. And we learned strength through hardship, facing, not walking away from challenges, accepting the truth is not always right in our minds, or losing in competition, yet accepting it in the name of sportsmanship. These lessons are what are directing us in the next page in the passing of time. We must now open ourselves up to different people and ways of life. We are moving away from all that has sheltered us in the past into an age when we must expand on our own ideals and values, solely our own. Our education does not guarantee us a future, though it would be nice. It simply opens the door into a dim passageway which we must light our way. It will be no easy task, but class of 85, we can do miracles. We can make our dreams come true. The world will not accept us with open arms. We must work for our future. It may not come easy for us. But grace for success, we'll do whatever we have to do. As Tennyson said in Ulysses, how dull it is to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use. Class of 85, the future is waiting for us to shine. We must use our past experiences to build our future. So with that in mind, let us leave here tonight knowing that we're a part of all that we have met. Thank you. And said, I would gladly do it again just to be able to say I represent the Dana Hills class of 1985. Our class has had victories too numerous to, to mention. It wasn't due to our leadership, but rather to the interest and pride that each one of us showed to make our class stand out above the rest. As president, I faced problems I never saw before. And I had to make decisions I thought were best for the class. Now I admit that if I knew if I knew then what I know now, some of the decisions would have been different. But that's what school is supposed to be about, a learning experience. I'd like to thank my teachers and advisors for giving me an endless supply of advice and support. But most of all, I'd like to thank you, my classmates, for giving and sharing with me these experiences. I'd like to now bring up the rest of the senior uh, class officers. Vice President, Ivan Agla. <laughs> Treasurer, Tim Strauss. <laughs> Secretary, Sherry Maynard. And Secretary, Sherry Maynard.
It's now with great pride that the class of 1985 presents its gift to the school. To the honors. This was an original statue sculpted by William Linebrook from a 200 pound black of alabaster. With a creative mind and an abundant resource of talent, Bill Linebrook created a piece of art to be displayed in the foyer of the school. This work is comprised of three dolphins swimming throughout the ocean, and it shall be something that anyone who visits the Dana Hills will be able to admire. Dr. Hope. Thank you, Ben, very much. Class of 1985. Class of 85. Please excuse me as I address my comments to the graduates. Dana Hills High School graduating class of 1985, you are very special to me. I've known some of you since kindergarten. I've known many of you since... From the right to the left, and we would ask you to remain standing as Lisa Gent provides us with the benediction. Bless our deeds and our ambitions of the Daniel Hills High